Hi there, my name is Kay Moon and I'm a Twin Flame Channel and Western Astrologer. And this is a video about the full moon in Scorpio 2020 for Twin Flames happening on May 7th, 2020 at 6.45 a.m. If you happen to be on the Eastern Seaboard of the United States, please check a time zone converter for your local times. <clears throat> this particular full moon is occurring here at the 17th degree of Scorpio. <clears throat> <clears throat> and there's a lot of very specific energy calling for the completion of cycles going on at this time and opening up the doorway to new paths forward. The thing that's really important to note um, is that we're kind of striating two paths, almost a fork in the road at this time. Um, it's a very interesting kind of energy because it's it's almost I don't know if you've ever seen those cartoons, um, you know, as a child where there's you know uh, the the cartoon character has a foot on one car and a foot on a car next to it, and the cars are going wider and wider and wider apart as the cartoon character gets stretched in two very different directions. That's the energy of this full moon in Scorpio, which is a micro, if you will, of the macro energy of 2020. Um, there is a definitive kind of fork in the road energy uh, for all of us during this time, calling us into being a higher version of ourselves and expression of divine love on planet Earth. I get into a lot of this energy and the specifics around it in the main video for this lunation. I highly suggest you have a listen to that um, because it goes into how to work with this energy and why um, you know the energies can be so tough at this time and how to navigate it. For this video, I'm just going to focus in on specifically the asteroid that I read as Juno, the Divine Feminine, and the planet I read as Jupiter, the Divine Masculine, um, and the energy is happening in the chart for them individually. Okay, um, that being said, let's dive on in. There is an energy here for Juno, the Divine Feminine, at the fifth degree here of Libra. Um, where she's conjunct the shaman's asteroid that is it's almost like a, a, a stillness like a quiet before the storm and as I was preparing for this full moon video the thing that I kept hearing um, was just you know she's been through it been through it Th her journey at this final degree of Libra before she gets to her final degree before turning direct, she's going to get to that fifth degree where the shaman's asteroid sits here before she turns direct, um, is wrapping up a cycle of introspection during this retrograde season. Juno's been retrograde from February 8th through May 26th, and she's been in shadow from, ooh, I want to say the end of November, beginning of December. She's been in shadow, meaning the degrees that she went over during her retrograde season, uh, la, 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 the 21st degree of Libra through the 5th degree of Libra. She's been in these degrees um, since about the beginning of December. For many divine feminines, this would have marked a period of time where, for reasons unknown to you, um, this something shifted in your dynamic um, between you and your divine counterpart, where you may either have not have felt them or felt the same way about them. Something inside of you started to unplug from the connection or get differently plugged into the connection. Um, this would, for some I've spoken to, they they're they're going through a divine reprieve whereby um, normally they have felt so hooked into the connection only for uh, this period of time to have arisen. And it almost feels like instead of them trying, trying, trying to release it, 
the universe released them from it. The universe unhooked them and gave them this opportunity to finally breathe and have their head space and their heart space back in a new way. There's different things that are going on for many of you. I know some of you are coming to clarity that what you're dealing with is an ascension partner as opposed to a twin flame. Some of you are deep in that questioning now and meditating on, you know, what is this kind of connection? And still others of you um, have found that you know, your, uh, you've let go and your divine counterpart has started to hold on and hold on to you as their anchor. Since Jupiter is going through so many changes this year, they're holding on a little bit more tightly to you and the connection. Um, but in all ways, this period of time would have marked a pulling back of the divine feminine energy out of the collective and into herself so that she can heal look within, guide herself, find her own intuitive direction, more deeply connect with the divine, all of those good things, energy inward during a retrograde, energy outward when planets move direct. So like I said, she went retrograde February 8th. She's about to turn direct at the end of this month, May 26th. And this particular month marks a period of a type of psychic silence if you will, where it's really imperative to just hang out and be still in the energies um, because there, there is going to become a moment where the wisdom you gleaned during this period of time um, is going to be called upon to share with the world, and that's coming up pretty quickly here. The Divine Feminine's asteroid Juno here is also in conjunct the energy of Uranus at the seventh degree of Taurus. She is opposite Chiron here at the seventh degree of Aries. She is squaring an energy known as Pholus. This is the energy of uh, sacrifice. Um, and all of this is kind of um, the best way to put it, you know, when I combine all of these energies and all of this placements, there's a, I've taken all I can take kind of energy here. And just when you feel like you've taken all that you can take, the universe hands you more joy. <laughs> so much fun. Um, and so there, there's, there is an energy around this full moon and all of our feminine energies. There's a moment in this full moon that it can be very uncomfortable. There's a lot of inner tension, a lot of inner turmoil. Um, there can be a lot of unknowns and unanswered questions as you look into, well, what am I supposed to be doing during this time? What is my leadership during this time? And there's a general uncertainty, not only about yourself, but there can also be some real questions that you may be experiencing if you're in separation about the connection. And if you're in union about the next step in terms of, you know, you're together, your combined service work in the world. Um, you know, there are some questions that really arise in this energy, like how can I heal um, when every step that you take, you feel like in the connection opens up a new wound or reactivates an old one. That's that Chiron piece. Or how can I create fairness for myself and for other people and in the connection um, when you're kind of stuck between really unfortunate choice A and really self-sabotaging choice B. Neither of them are good choices. That's her position here in Libra in retrograde. It's like, I'm damned if I do, damned if I don't. Um, you know, there's an energy here of ultimately revealing that you can't always be a good partner to somebody else or to until you've been a good partner to yourself. And that's this Chiron in Aries piece. Like we can't help anyone till our own oxygen masks are on first. And so this full moon is really prompting us to be still and look within um, and have a, have, have a deeper understanding about 
based on what can change, what must change in order for us to take the next step forward. There's a lot of things that can't change right now, um, but this energy is going to reveal under this full moon what can change and why it needs to and why now is the time. Um, I go into depth about this in the main video, so I highly encourage you to watch that. If you know that you're really feeling this tension, um, this tension's only going to ratchet up between now, um, May, June, July, and September are the months during 2020 where things are going to get really, shall we say, spicy, um, interesting, um, confusing, um, tension-filled, a lot of past getting pulled into the present while you're trying to make a new future for yourself. Um, there's a lot of that kind of energy this year, and it's because we're about to move into a retrograde season. Um, and on top of this retrograde season, I lay out all the retrogrades that we're about to experience in the main video. We've also walked into the Sagittarius Gemini eclipse season, and those eclipses begin in June. So if you know that you are a Sag, a Gemini, a Pisces, or a Virgo, those are our mutable signs of the zodiac. You're going to feel this energy the most, these eclipses the most. Um, and now is a great time to set up a personal reading so you understand the path that your life is trying to get you to take over the course of the next four to five months because this retrograde season is going to, hmm, let's just say, force your hand <laughs> in getting you to get where you're supposed to be. Um, so personal readings are available at K-R-Y-S-A-L-I-S-M-O-O-N at gmail.com. We can have a deep dive into what's going on for you and your world, how you need to shift stuff, what you need to work on, and how to work on it so that you're prepared when the gigantic union window opens at the end of this year. I talk about that union window in the 2020 Twin Flame Energy Update, the pat the pre-union path, which is what we're on right now. Definitely have a listen to that video if you're curious. I explain in detail why during that video I am not offering twin flame readings right now. I'm only doing personal readings. And it has a lot to do with this pre-union path energy that has both divine feminine and divine masculine sitting in squaring signs to one another facing directions that have nothing to do with the other person. And this is the year that groundwork is being laid in your 3D world so that a union can occur down the road. But if we're not doing our work in our 3D world, it can be very difficult to make that quantum leap when the window opens. So I've really set up my schedule to focus everyone in on what's the step I need to take to be ready when that window opens. So personal readings can be found over there. Um, just email me, you'll get an auto responder. It explains how to book, make your payment. As soon as it's made, I send you a confirmation that then allows you the opportunity to uh, schedule your June reading with me. Let's take a look at what Jupiter, the divine masculine, is up to in this chart. There's a real big choose your own adventure energy here. Um, I don't know if anyone here grew up reading those choose your own adventure books where um, you would read about 15 to 30 pages of the book and then get to a point in the book that says, okay, what should the main character do? If the main character should do this, then turn to page 78. If the main character should do that, turn to page 36. This is one of those moments where you need to kind of choose what happens next. There is a fork in the road and a picking of a path here. Jupiter is conjunct Pluto, uh, which I've been talking about in the last three videos. If you've missed it, definitely have a listen. Um, this conjunction of Pluto is a grand strip down of male ego and uh, misuses of our masculine energies and power, um, either toward ourselves or our lives, in our families, in our work. This strip down is asking us to be more authentic with who we are in our 
our masculine energies and how we wield those energies on planet Earth. This is also a shakeup when it comes to the structure of divine masculine lives on planet Earth. So when I say structure, I'm talking about where you live, what you do for work, how your money is handled, what kind of vehicle you drive. I'm talking about your physical body. Are you overweight? Are you underweight? Do you have health issues? This particular year is asking you to shore up any kind of holes that are causing you to have um, sinkages when you know the ground shakes. So what I mean by that is the ground shakes a little bit, life shakes a little bit, and because there are certain things in your physical body that aren't handled, you then have an emotional reaction that compromises your composure. Or, and not that emotional reactions are bad. They're not. They're bad when they compromise our capacity to respond and love. And this year is going to expose for all of us where in our 3D world we are so compromised, we are not able to respond in love. So you're, the factory shuts down and you lose your job. Are you unable to respond in love because there are certain things in your finances that haven't been taken care of up to this point that you have known need to be dealt with? This year is going to expose it. Okay, so your wife wants a divorce. Fine. Are there certain things in the way the house property is set up that make it so that you shut down, you can't respond in love because find, like the house structure or the structure of the property or the structure of the finances tied to the property can't quite come like compromise you in such a way that you see you you see yourself being a lower version of yourself. All of this is going to be stirred up this year and show you where the holes are in your foundation so that you can close them and be a better person of yourself. This is this Jupiter conjunct Pluto energy going on all year. We've already had the first major conjunction. There are two more left. We've also got Jupiter conjunct Chariclo here. So 29 and 27th degree of uh, Capricorn. And I love this energy. Um, there's an interesting thing here where, you know, Jupiter wants to expand, 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 loves to grow, loves opportunity. And Chariclo is like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll give you more opportunity. I'll give you more. I'll bless you. I'll bless you. I'll bless you. I'll intercede on your behalf and give you more. So there is an opportunity. There are opportunities here in the wake of the destruction of the last month where Jupiter and Pluto met up, there are opportunities here, but we have to be willing to take them. We have to be willing to say, okay, I'm going to expand. I'm not going to play small and I'm going to trust the universe is going to intercede on my behalf because they see me trying to grow. It can and it will. We've also here gotten this chart, the, this Jupiter, uh, in conjunct, this Venus and Vesta here in Gemini. And so the fun thing about this energy, whoo, not really, um, <laughs> is that there's a tension between what you may find yourself committed to divine masculines and how it is you know you need to transform your life. My heart lives over here and I'm committed over here. This is what I value and what I want. Your conscious mind is telling you this here in Gemini. But my life is over here. There are bricks falling around me from the house that I've been living in. You know, there's entire structures crumbling at my feet. And I can't seem to just get over there to the thing that I value. That's okay. That's going to shift. This imbalance is temporary. But it's highlighted at this point to show you for now what is required of you in terms of your own self-love so that you can get out of the burning building. Change is upon us. The time is now. You cannot stay in the burning building anymore, Divine Masculines. And Divine Feminines, same is true for you. Change is upon you. 
you have to the time is to make a choice about how you are going who what kind of woman you're going to be on planet earth what kind of energy force are you going to stand for in the coming months and years ahead that clarity is upon our masculine energies now asking us to shore up the foundation so that we can stand for what matters okay and then the final energies here is this square to Eris for divine masculines. Um, so here's Jupiter here, and here's Eris. Where's our girl at? Here's Eris at the 24th degree of Aries, and uh, the creation goddess over here at the 26th degree of Libra. And so these are two very different energies. Eris wants to destroy. She wants to throw a bomb and walk away. She is the energy of discord, disharmony, and strife. And she, it's, there's a time and a place for her. We need her energy when we have been disenfranchised. There is a, a reason for right, righteous protest. And that's what Eris is. Opposite her, we've got creation goddess. Creation goddess over here is saying, let's, let's love and create. Let's build. Let's do the thing. Let's create the things that we know we want to see populated on planet Earth. Both energies are necessary. Divine masculine energy sits right in between the two and is being asked to choose. Pick a path. Pick a path. Who are you going to be when the sky is falling? And this is a note for all of us. Our masculine energies are the energies of choice and ambition and outward drive and creation in the 3D world. What are you creating with your conversations, with your choices? Who are you? Beautiful energy under this Scorpio full moon. Scorpio is the energy of alchemy, change, and transformation. And this full moon is saying, get about it. Be about it. Make the choices. They're not easy choices at this time. And I go into why and how to work with that in the main video. So please have a listen. But whatever you choose, there is going to be some sort of recognition that there are things that you're going to need to let go. There's something that can't stay the way it is. You don't have this particular, this particular full moon is not an energy of both. And it's an energy of either or, and both are appropriate energies in the universe in the big picture. It's wonderful to have a capacity to play both. And, but, at this particular moment, we're being asked to choose either or. You cannot necessarily, like a very simple example, and I run into this in my sessions a lot with twins. You cannot choose to be in union with your twin and married to someone else if that someone else does not know and is not interested in being in an open marriage with you. It will not work. So you're going to have to either give up the idea, the illusion that you can somehow create a union or that the stars can force it upon you if you're taking no action, or you're going to have to give up the marriage, or you're going to have to give up the idea that the marriage can stand as is. You're going to have to bring your your husband or your wife into the conversation that you're in love with this other person and you want them to be a part of the marriage too that's an option but the existing structure it's already crumbling so you have to choose a new path forward so that's just one example um, of the ways in which we're being shown what it's been isn't what it can be anymore we have to find a new way forward so for others of you depending upon where scorpio sits in your chart the house that scorpio is in this full moon is going could pot potentially that was a seventh house matter here but this full moon could illuminate something in the arena of work that's a 10th house matter it could illuminate something in the arena of your money that's a second house matter, or it could illuminate something in the arena of your home and where you live. 
That's a fourth house matter. Wherever Scorpio sits in your chart is where this energy is going to become particularly loud during this full moon. It may start a little subtle, but something that's been getting on your nerves and not sitting right or working right is going to have a particular type of let's just say highlight. <laughs> it's going to be highlighted at this full moon so that you can see it in very clear terms and thereby make a change in the weeks ahead. Okay. Um, in that, there is going to be a recognition of a loss um, of some sort of form or self that was engaged in holding up those old structures at this full moon and a loss of a self that may have been gone for some time now. Um, you know, I read for a woman not that long ago, we were having a different type of Scorpio moment and she needed to move, her house had gotten flooded. Um, and now there was um, an infectious mold issue in the house. And so the lunation was telling her, and so was everything else in her chart, you got to let this house go. This isn't going to work for you to continue to live here anymore. This is not an option because um, it's literally making you sick. She had been to the doctor and she knew. Um, and so there was a her that was invested in being in that particular house that she was going to have to let go of, a vision of who she was and what that meant to her. There was a piece of her that she needed to grieve the loss of. This is a moment of recognition that some part of our life has moved on despite our attempts to keep it alive. It's completed its cycle in, in our lives, and now it's time to honor that completion and let go. So um, this is not just for divine masculine. This is divine feminine as well. Um, both energies are being faced with this. And so just know that under the light of this full moon, the degree to which you're capable of letting go is going to facilitate your ability to take the next step once that next step arises. So like I said, I go in depth about this energy inside the main video. If you'd like to do a personal reading to see how these eclipses and the coming retrogrades are going to play out for you in the coming months, and in particular this month, we've got three major retrogrades going on, but email me at chrysalismoon at gmail.com for a personal reading and we can get that set up. I'll just quickly run through the retrogrades for May. They go in this order. Saturn goes retrograde May 11th through September 29th. Venus goes retrograde May 13th through June 25th. Jupiter goes retrograde May 14th through September 13th. Pluto's already retrograde April 25th through October 4th. Um, and so there is a lot of change, my friends, a lot of change. And now's the time to honor the call for change and do the best we can with moving, moving forward with it. I thank you so much for watching this video, subscribing and sharing, and I look forward to hearing how all of this resonates for you in the comments below. Take great care and bye for now.